a high frequency centrifuge or with a blowtorch. After deflasking and sandblasting, the crowns are separated from the sprues, leaving a small stub attached to the crown. This stub helps not only to secure the crowns in the duplication material, but also provides a small surface to be used in order to separate the primary and secondary parts from each other. The crowns are repositioned on the stumps and without further trimming, the retention surfaces are carefully milled. Under no circumstances are undercut areas to be left in the metal. The milling work is completed by polishing with diamond paste to achieve a high luster sheen. Now the master model is prepared for duplication. Undercuts are carefully blocked out with thermowax. Duplication is carried out with a silicone material such as Rema Sil. After the silicone has set, remove the master model. Any crowns that don't remain in the duplicating flask can be repositioned easily. The refractory model is cast with Rima Star special investment material. After setting and deflasking, the primary crowns are properly positioned. Dry the refractory model, coat with adhesive and wax up the framework. The milled surfaces are covered with a thin coat of stress-free casting wax and then anatomically sculpted with modelling wax. Here two aspects are very important. The attachment arm should be substantial enough and the interdental embrasure should not be too pronounced. Failure to take this into consideration may easily result in an incomplete cast. Wax a small length of redoer clasp wire onto the milled groove of the channel shoulder pin attachment. Bend the upper part of the wire slightly to assure that it will be well anchored in the investment and not displaced during casting. Positioning of the sprues onto the wax framework is also vitally important to success. The 3.5 mm wax sprues must be placed at least 10 mm away from the primary crowns. Placing the sprues too close increases the possibility that the melt might fuse onto the primary parts. Flask and preheat the model in the usual way. Allow the muffle to heat soak for one hour at 1000 degrees centigrade in order to permit the primary crowns to oxidize properly. The plate may be cast with the standard casting alloy, Romanium GM380. As well as with the rigid special alloy, Romanium GM380. If porcelain is to be bonded to the secondary structure, it may be cast with Romanium CD, the chrome cobalt porcelain bonding alloy. Romanium GM380 can be melted in the high frequency centrifuge. Heat until the individual ingots fuse and the last shadow has disappeared from the surface. This is the correct moment to release the centrifuge. After the muffle has cooled off, carefully deflask and sandblast the structure to remove all investment powder residues. Don't separate the primary and secondary parts before sandblasting is complete. Observe the exact fit of the cast on parts. Use a riveting hammer or a compressed air deflasking unit to separate the primary and secondary parts by carefully taping on the sprue stumps of the crowns. Remove the oxidized pin on the channel shoulder pin attachment. It will be replaced later with a new one. Using a fine control blaster and 50 micrometer aluminium oxide under reduced pressure, carefully clean the inner surfaces of the secondary attachments. Polishing beads produce a smooth surface and further processing is unnecessary. Cut the sprues and finish the framework in the usual manner. 
Before placing in the electrolytic polishing unit, cover the secondary attachments with heat-resistant wax. No further trimming is necessary to fit the cast onto the master model. In order to solder the pins, enlarge the borehole slightly on the occlusal side. Cut a small notch at the end of the groove to facilitate activating the pin. Place the chrome cobalt redoer wire pin in the groove of the attachment arm and spot weld the occlusal tip to the attachment arm. Cover the pin with a thin layer of anti-flux agent and solder with chrome cobalt solder. Trim, sandblast and clean the primary crowns before applying the porcelain. Don't remove the oxides from the milled surfaces at this time. Apply the porcelain according to the porcelain manufacturer's instructions, taking care to slow cool after each firing. Good porcelain adhesion and colour stability are typical features of the porcelain bonding alloy Romanium CD. Before polishing, carefully clean the insides of the crowns and milled surfaces with aluminium oxide and polishing beads. Cover the porcelain surfaces with sticky wax to avoid damaging them. The finished combination denture manufactured using the cast-on technique speaks for itself. The advantages of the cast-on technique are obvious. A high degree of precision and a time-saving production method. Not only does the patient receive a high-quality precision denture, the exclusive use of chrome cobalt alloys also assures better biocompatibility. Dentorum. Progress through innovation.